to Ecu Sports Stadium in Bell Fountain, but Alan East and Tri Village did. That is the site of this Region 24 Regional semifinal matchup. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Bell Fountain. Patrick Hamler, Scott Nurse here with you. And a trip to the regional finals on the line for both these teams. Allen East looking to make their second appearance in a regional final. Tri Village looking to make their first appearance in a regional final. Looking forward to a great matchup tonight as we look at the keys to the game. What's it going to take for one of these teams to walk away with a win this week, Scott? Yeah, Patrick, both of these teams are very good. They're 11 and 1. Uh, the first key I've got is Allen East defense. Tri Village is the highest scoring team in Division 6. They average 46.3 points per game. And they got a quarterback who's completed 71 of its percent of his passes for over 2,000 yards. And they got an all Ohio running back in Reed Ware with 1,600 yards and 27 TDs. The Allen East defense has to rise up to the challenge. They must disrupt the passing game and win the line of scrimmage to stop this run. This is the, the biggest matchup of the game in my mind. Number two, balance and success. Allen East has a very balanced offensive attack. 1,700 yards passing and 2,700 yards rushing. Jacob Hirschberger leads Allen East in both categories. Allen East will need to mix it up and, and in order to be successful, especially on first and second downs and keep that tri-village offense off the field. Keep an eye on Keaton Lehman. He's an excellent Allen East receiver. He's got 40 catches, 650 yards. I think we'll see a big play from him. And then number three, value the ball. Both of these teams will want to win the time of possession. Turnovers and special team success are keys to that. Both impact field position cannot have any turnovers. It must be a mistake-free, penalty-free game to get the win. Focus and concentration throughout the entire game. All right, thank you, Scott. Who will punch their ticket to the Region 24 Regional Final next week? We'll find out in 48 minutes. Allen East, Tri-Village, coming up next on WOSN. For kickoff from AccuSports Stadium, Allen East won the toss. They will receive the football. Talking with head coach Joel Billings before the game, he said they have won the, they have not, well, not won the toss. They have received every single game this season. He said, hey, it's working. Don't change it up. That's going to be and a little trouble there is Hole fields this one and has a seam. Going to work out for him. He's out across the 40, across midfield. Has only the kicker to beat, and it's the kicker who brings him down and around the 36-yard line as that was the only guy able to stop him on that side of the field, Braden Keating, who also the quarterback for Tri-Village, and Allen East in great field position to start. Yeah, you see Hole averages 15.6 per return. He got a lot more on that one. Um, it, it, it's kind of one of those situations where a lot of times on a kickoff when someone mishandles the ball, everybody sort of relaxes a little bit. Allen East takes advantage of that great field position. Showed you the officials briefly there. First down and 10. Of course, you see the field having quite a bit of snow on it, so you're going to have to bear with us as we tell you uh, where everybody is here as best as we can. Here's Hole is going to carry and pick up about five yards on first down. That's Jack Hole, who has been the one of the leading rushers for this Allen East attack this season. Yeah, Jack comes into the game with 1,157 yards, averages 6.1 per carry. Excellent running back. Now Hirschberg going to roll the right side. It's going to be a keeper. And has some blockers there. Picks up a nice block from Hole there on the side before he is pushed out of bounds. Tackle made by Noah Finkbein, number five for Tri-Village. Now bring him second down. Yeah, and as we mentioned, Joel Hirschberger, he leads uh, the Allen East offense in rushing. He's got 1,174 yards, averages 10 yards per carry, 17 touchdowns this year. Quite a bit of action on the ground. That brings up first down, and this is going to be Hole with the carry. He has stopped in the backfield for a loss as the tackle made by Austin Reese Miller, number 52, one of the leaders in this Patriot defense this season. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Patrick, to see if they can throw the football. Jake Hersberger is an excellent passer, but, uh, you know, the conditions are difficult right now. I'm, I'm kind of curious how the, how the ball feels to the quarterback. Now on second down and long, Hershberger going to try that left side and not finding a whole lot of space there as he has brought down Tanner Prince and Reese Miller in on the stop for Tri-Village. Yeah, as we mentioned, uh, Tri-Village, one of the top scorers in this region. Defensively, that's been their challenge, that side of the football and stopping their opponents. As you mentioned, the field conditions 
Uh, interesting to say the least. This is something that neither team has had to deal with this season so far. We'll see who is able to best make the adjustment. Here is Hershberger on third down. Has to scramble. Trying to look downfield. Throws and the catch is going to be incomplete rather. That was intended for number six Caleb Hopkins and that'll bring up fourth down and we might get to see what the kicking conditions are looking like here as we take a look at the east side replay. Yeah, and Hershberger does a nice job of putting it the only place he could put it for his receiver to have a chance at it just a little bit wide there. So it looks like they are going to go for it here on fourth down and 11. Try to cash in on the good kickoff return, and it looks like there's probably going to be a false start called on Allen East, and indeed it will be. So a fourth and 11 is going to make it a fourth and 16, and we'll see if that changes the calculus here. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, Patrick. You see quite a bit of snow on the field there. The official had to kind of kick out some snow out of the way just to place the football. It looks like they will still go for it on fourth down. This would be this would have been the longest field goal of Braylon Kennedy's career, uh, season rather. Now Herzberg going to take off on fourth down. Going to try and pick it up all by himself and not going to happen. And the ball comes out. And it's recovered by Alan East, but that will be a moot point as Tri-Village forces the turnover on down. So after a good kickoff, great defensive stand by Tri-Village. And now the Patriots will start with their first drive. Yeah, and I think that's what we're going to see uh, more, more and more tonight uh, rather than the passing game that both of these teams have, you know, been very successful with all season long. This is the first real uh, weather issue we've had on, on the weekends this season. It's been great weather all year long, and so uh, this is going to create quite a challenge for the offenses. Fall took a bye week. We moved right to winter. Now here's Tri-Village, and this play is going to be blown dead, and we're probably going to have a false start against Tri-Village. Or are we going to have possibly offsides on Allen East? Yeah, it looks like they did. That's going against the Allen East Mustang. So that will make it a first down and five for the Patriots before they run an official play. Braden Keating, the 5'10 junior. And he's going to keep it on first and five and not getting much of anything. The ball comes out, and Allen East recovers it at the 29-yard line. Yeah, it looked to me like number one, Keaton Miller, 6'4", 205-pound senior. It looks like he was pulling, stripped the ball loose. And, and, and as I mentioned, Patrick, I think that's going to be one of the challenges tonight. You can see the amount of snow on the field, so holding on to that football is going to be difficult. I think it was Joseph Hole there, number eight, in on the grip and rip, and Cade Wireman coming up with the recovery for Allen East. So a big turnover, and now Allen East set up once again with great field position, just shy, just beyond the 30-yard line. We'll see if they can cash in. Hershberger in the shotgun. He's going to keep it this time, go around the left side, and not going to get much of anything. Justin Finkbein in there on the stop for Tri-Village. You know, one of the challenges for Hershberg is you see him here, and you, you get a good look. What a great view of the lineman. Very difficult footing, as you can see. Hershberger relies on his quickness, his shiftiness. He's super, super athletic, and to be able to make cuts on this field is going to be really difficult. Allen, he's very run-heavy. Offense now here is Jack Hole on second down, barreling ahead for a modest gain, and that'll bring up a third down and about one and a half yards to go. Yeah, and this is just power football straight ahead. I think uh, I think you're going to see a lot of that tonight. No cutting involved, just just get what you can get. You can see what great camera work we got there. You can see quite a bit of snow on the field. Here's the pass on third down to Hole and is going to be stopped short of the first down. Excellent first tackle, I think. That was, I think that was Finkbein who came in there on the stop for Tri-Village. Anyway, an outstanding tackle. Yeah, Hole comes into the game with 23 catches, averages 12.3 a catch, has 283 yards on the season. So Allen East going to go for it again on fourth down. We'll see if they run a play. Maybe they try and get Tri-Village to jump offside. 15 on the play clock. They're going to run it. 
and Hershberger is going to run ahead and pick up the first down at the 15-yard line. So Allen is able to convert on fourth down and keep this drive alive. Yeah, and I think uh, the offensive line is going to be the key tonight as you get a good look at them here. They've got to fire out, create little seams, and allow the, the, that power running game for Allen East to, to be successful. Now on first down, Hershberger dropping back, pass incomplete, looking for Joseph Hole. Might have been some miscommunication there. Don't know if maybe Hole was ready for it or the pass was too quick. In any case, it is second down. Yeah, and of course, timing on passing play is very difficult in this kind of a situation there because uh, normally, you know, you're gonna you're gonna run your route, make your cut, and be out there. This time, uh, with this kind of footing, it's gonna be a little bit slower developing. Now on second down, Hershberger hands off to Jack Hole, and Jack Hole not getting very much on that play. Reese Miller in there on the stop. Reese Miller, the leading tackler for the Patriots this season. 20 and a half tackles for loss. That's second on the team, but overall 170 tackles, and here he adds to his total there. Yeah, and you can see he's a big dude. Third down and long. Hershberger back to pass, and that is gonna fall incomplete. Looking there for Hopkins over on the far side and another fourth down coming up for Allen East. Yeah, and again, I think that's just a case there where Hopkins normally would be able to hard plant and come back to the football a little more. Hershberger's expecting him to come back. He just doesn't have the footing to come back to the football. So it ends up being incomplete. So they will set up for the field goal as Hershberger clearing a spot in the snow. Novel concept. <laughs> Allen East five for eight this year on field goals. Kennedy will attempt a 32 yard field goal and the snap is a little rough. Hershberger does a nice job of getting it down and that kick is good. Braylon Kennedy puts the first points on the board, make him six of nine now from field goal range this season and Allen East up early three nothing. Welcome back, Allen East on top, 3-0, 32 yard Braylon Kennedy field goal. And even though Allen East took the lead, Scott Nurse, you, as your Tri-Villages defense, you've got to feel pretty good. You had two really good field position starts for Allen East, and they've only come away with three points from it. Yeah, they got to feel good about that. But, uh, you know, given the circumstances, given the conditions, that might be, um, you know, what we see a lot of tonight. It's going to be difficult to move the football. So now Tri-Village will field their first kick, and Reed Weir, their terrific running back, brings that out to the 35-yard line, and that's where the Patriots will start their second drive. We take a look at the Patriots under first-year head coach Matt Hopkins, and what a first year, 11-1. and one. And you see the points per game, the Patriots putting up points in bunches, and they also win games by quite a bit as well. Take a look at the Allen East Mustangs under third year head coach Joel Billings, also putting up points in bunches and coming up with big wins as well. First and 10, and this is the handoff to Weir, only getting about two yards on that carry. Yeah, both these teams come in, Patrick, very similar. Very well balanced, they've got good quarterbacks, they've had good success in both the passing and running games. They, they tend to score a lot of points and hold their opponents to very little. Of course, that's what uh, you know good teams do, and both these teams, 11 and one, uh, this is gonna be a, this is gonna be a real battle tonight. I'm expecting a good one here on WOSN. Streaming live on NFHS. Here's Keating, and he's gonna keep this one, go right up the middle where he is met by a not so welcoming party of Allen East Mustangs, Cade Wireman, in on the stop along with Brogan Paxson. Yeah, and that's just a good, good fundamental tackle right there by Cade Wireman. He lowered his shoulders, he met, wrapped, drove him back into the ground. As a coach, that's what you like to see. Brings up a third down and five. Keating in the gun and some trouble with the handoff is just gonna keep it and is going to find the corner and get enough for the first down. It's Hershberger who ends up pushing him out of bounds. Might have got some help from Keaton Lehman, number four. And in any case, that will move the sticks for a Tri-Village first down. Yeah. 
So what looked like it might have been a busted play, almost a busted play. Keating able to hang on to the football and make it a positive play and a first down. Yeah, Allen East in that 5-3 defense uh, should have been able to turn that back into the middle. Now Keating to pass on first down, and that one little high. Carson Klum in there on the defense, number seven for Allen East. Pass intended for number eight, Lucas Howell for Tri-Village. Yeah, and you can tell he's having a little trouble gripping the football. That one looked sort of like an odd throwing motion, like he really didn't have full control of that football in his hands. Watching the quarterbacks warm up before the game, and there might not be a ton of really crisp throws tonight, depending on how comfortable they get with the football. Here is Weir on the handoff and picks up about three yards. Yeah, we haven't really talked about Reed Ware. He's got 175 carries this year, 1,384 yards coming in. The average is 7.9 per carry. He's got 22 touchdowns, and he was an All-Ohio running back last year as a sophomore. We're putting together a fantastic season, 22 touchdowns, five touchdowns receiving as well, so 27 total touchdowns for him on the season, and uh, the Tri-Village faithful will like to see him put one or two more in this game. Now Keating going long and has a man, no, incomplete. In and out of the hands of the wide receiver. That was Tanner Prince, number two. And a number of Mustangs in on the cover is Trey Hensley in there on the stop as well for Allen East and that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, Tanner Prince is their number one receiver. He's got 909 yards coming in tonight and 21.6 per catch. So he is a huge threat for Tri-Village. So Tri-Village will punt this one away, it appears. And indeed they will. Hershberger back to receive and is just gonna let that one bounce. And Tri-Village will down it, Finkbein downs it at the 10 yard line. So good defensive stand by Allen East. And you get the sense that with the conditions, with it being, this is the first really cold weekend that we've had. This is the first snowy weekend that we've had. This is gonna come down, you think, to really a battle of, of field position. Who can take advantage of that field position? And so far, it's been the Mustangs, but we're early on. Yeah, I think so. And, and I think that, you know, as a player, you gotta get used to this too. You gotta get used to this being on the field. The, the entire season, it's basically been warm weather. I mean, we had 70 degrees last week. And now all of a sudden it's 32 degrees, it's snow on the field, it's a completely different environment for both these teams. Here is Hole on the carry on first down, bouncing it to the outside, has a little bit of a seam before he is tracked down from behind by Finkbein. That's a nice pickup and that will move the sticks, gain of 11 on first down. Yeah, I like Hole, he's, he's tough, he's physical, he's a good runner. He's a good, really nice uh, compliment to Hershberger. At the tail end of that replay, and Hole doing a nice job. Looked like he was going to go middle, and uh, actually there's a penalty on the play. And that's going to go against Allen East, so that's going to negate the long run. I'm going to say it was in the neighborhood of Holding, and it was in the area where Hole was tackled. So it's first down, but they're going to be about eight yards back where they were. So make it about a first down and eight instead of first down and ten. Now Hershberger faking the pass the hole. He's going to take it up the middle, spin move, and gets a couple of yards there. You'd yeah. think with a white field we'd see a yellow flag pretty readily, but we we, did, we missed that one. Well, it may have went into a snowbank down there. <laughs> but uh, Possible. Yeah. You know, Hershberger there, uh, good decision. I think that was a, an option play. He could he could have thrown it out to the right or run it, kept it himself. Good decision. Now Hershberger's going to keep this one on second down. Kind of going to the outside. And a nice wrap-up tackle by Noah Finkbein. And Hershberger signals first down. I don't know if they got it, however. Yeah, it's going to be close. It looks like the chains are moving, so. Yep, they're going to say he got it. So, so he was right. So Allen East first down. And Taking I, a look at this one. Yeah, and I think normally on this kind of a play, you'd see Hershberger make a hard cut right about here. He would cut it back towards the inside, just not able to do that. Still enough to pick up the first down. Now Jack Hole going up the middle, and the 205-pound junior is 
stopped for about, he picked up four yards on that. Look like he, point of contact was about a yard in. He's able to push ahead an additional three, yeah, like which the, is what 5'8", 205 pounds gets you. <laughs> That's a lot of momentum. So coming up second down and six, this is Hole again. And this time the Tri-Village defense stiffens up. Reese Miller, among others, in on the stop for Tri-Village. Christian Cantrell also in there on the stop for the Patriots. Yeah, third and about three, I'd look for something, uh, maybe maybe possibly on the edge here. Get Hershberger outside where he can, he can do something to Back to pass and the pressure coming and the sack claimed as Tri-Village brought the heat and they reach home. Seth Cook, the 6'2", 180 pound senior with the stop and that's gonna set up fourth down and I would imagine we're gonna see the Mustangs with their first punt of the night. He had no time, Patrick, no time whatsoever. On the snap, uh, looks like uh, you're right, Seth Cook almost beat the snap back to the quarterback. And came untouched through the line. Just a missed assignment. So now Hershberger will punt this one away. And Finkbein has to chase this one and ends up fielding it. Breaks a tackle at the 30 yard line. Gets some space, now he's out to the 40. Oh. Ball pops out but goes out of bounds. So Tri-Village will maintain possession as they'll get the ball. Looks like right around the 42 yard line. And Turnover is going to be something to watch. We'll take a look at the replay of the punt here. Yeah, fortunate that ball bounces up to Think Bomb. Otherwise, it would have kept rolling. But you can see he has a little trouble there starting and re stopping and restarting. And when he does, big hit, big hit by number 48 for Allen East. So Cole's helmet hits the ball. How's that for alliteration on a Saturday night? Uh, yes. Keating in the gun, first and 10. Allen East up three nothing. Here's the handoff to Weir. Out across the 45, down to the 47. About a five yard pickup on first down. Yeah, it looks like Allen East has made a little adjustment here on their defensive alignment too. They normally play a 5-3. It looks like they're playing a little more of a 4-4 tonight. Dropping an extra, an extra man into coverage to protect against that passing game. Hand off to Weir once again and finding a little bit more space this time as he picks up six yards and a first down. Hershberger in on the stop. Also Keaton Miller getting in there on the tackle as well. And it's kind of a case of pick your poison there. That 4-4 defense spreads out that defensive line at just a little more, gives a little more of a gap in the offensive line for, uh, for Weir to run. Fresh set of downs for the Patriots as we come up on a minute 43 remaining in this first quarter. Allen East with a 3-0 lead over Tri-Village. Keating corrals the high snap, hangs on to it himself and will pick up about two yards as Miller in there on the stop for the Mustangs. Yeah, really good read by Keaton Miller here. You see him come from the left side and just does a nice job of eyeballing the football making the tackle. The snow has started up a little bit again here at Aki Sports Stadium in Bell Fountain. As Keating drops back to pass and the pass is complete. Prince completes the pass, gets about 13 on the play and another first down for Tri-Village. Hensley in on the stop. As we mentioned, Prince is his favorite target. He's got 13 touchdowns coming into the game tonight. Back quickly here is the handoff, and right there, Allen East in the backfield, but able to push ahead, and then was pushed back. And thought the maybe the ball came out, he's pushed back. Let's we'll see where they actually mark him down. Looks like they're going to mark him down five yards back. Yeah, that was. So let's take a look at this one, Scott. Yeah, really good play by Keaton Lehman, number four. Penetrates the offensive line of. Looks like they were fighting for the football there. I didn't know if, I mean, from that angle, it looked like maybe Keaton Lehman, number four, had the football and then had it taken back away. Yeah, it looked like it exchanged uh, e even the Tri-Village players. It went from one player to another. Well, they moved him back, so they placed the ball 
over there by the, let's see, about the 35-yard line. So it looks like they blew the play dead when they got back to the line of scrimmage. That's what it looks like to me. I don't know if that's what we're yeah, it's hard discussing to, at the moment. It's hard to tell uh, where the yard markers are, like what. Well, in any case, that is going to be the end of the first quarter. And we've got a good one brewing here in the Region 24 semifinal. Allen East 3, Tri-Ville is nothing. Second quarter coming up here on WOSN. Stop into sites on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full service meat in deli. Having a large event, Stites also caters. Give us a call. Switching through ball coming out again for Tri-Village and able to hang on to it and <laughs> advancing Hershberger the has football. It. Hershberger has. He has the ball, no helmet. Wow, that, that ball started with Reed Ware and then number 78 somehow picked up the fumble for Tri-Village. That's Dylan Plush. And then Hershberger took it from him, but his helmet flew off. So I, I don't, and the officials are giving it back to Tri-Village, it looks like. So Plush has it here. He picks up the fumble and advances it. And, and then, then Hershberger takes it away from Plush. Loses his helmets. So I think they're gonna mark they him. Are, they are gonna give it to Alan East. Yeah, so Alan East recovers the football. Okay, so that is a fumble recovery. And they marked it dead when his helmet came off as, as a rule, probably related to safety. Makes sense. So they're going to run Hensley in at quarterback. So Hershberger, his helmet came off, has to come out for a play. So Hensley hands the ball off to Hole. So let's take a look at this one again. Yeah, great cam work by the crew. You can see Weir lost the ball, right. and then Plus has it right here. Hershberger. And then Hershberger just rips it out of his hands. Great play. So second turnover for Tri-Village, and now Hershberger in trouble, and is he gonna get sacked? Throws this one away, dangerous pass. Hole comes up with the catch. Able to make something out of it. Is this down at the 30-yard line? And You know, Patrick, that's what we expect from well, Jacob Hershberger. He makes plays when it doesn't look like there's anything there. And you can see here, he, he I, I thought he was just thrown away too. And he sees, finds Hole as he spins around and tosses it to him. Jaden Hollinger hanging on for dear life. He was the guy in there, and I thought maybe they would uh, blow it dead, but yeah, and they, all let that. The, they let the play continue, which kudos to the officials, and Hershberger able to, I don't know if he was looking for hole, but he found him. Well, and they uh, now they have a first down. I think they're gonna get a ball exchange here, try to get a drier football. Yeah, it looks like a new football is out there right now. So first and 10, hole with the handoff at the 30-yard line, and that's about where he's going to get, down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, hole's a power runner. He's got to get his feet and his legs under him, and and uh, when you have this much snow on the field, very difficult to, to drive your legs through that defender. Normally, we'd see hole break those tackles and get a few more yards. Be nice to have that technology where they uh, would draw the lines on the screen and the numbers in black, so you can see them on the on the white snow. I'm sure that's a, I'm sure that's an entirely other fundraiser uh, for uh, Caleb Hopkins <laughs> with the catch and then pushed back for a modest gain. Prince in on the stop along with number 11, Braden Keating. Caleb Hopkins, we haven't uh, mentioned him tonight. He's got 25 receptions, 362 yards, averages 14.5 yards per catch. Excellent receiver. There's Berger, roll out, pass is complete. Keaton Lehman, Lehman with the first down, and then some pushed out of bounds, the 46 yard line. Lehman, the leading receiver for the Mustangs, and he has a first down. Well, they're trying to get, find a way to get him the football, and I like this play. It really, uh, uh, it shortens the pass. So by rolling Hershberger out there to the left, you have a much shorter pass. He's not throwing it from the pocket into the flat, and you see a uh, much higher degree of success there. Here's the handoff to hold on first down, and he slides for a gain of three yards. <laughs> That's funny. That's exactly what he did. He slid. 
ball is very close to midfield. We take another look at this one. Justin Finkbein in there on the stop for Tri Village. That'll bring him a second down and eight. Herzberg a little trouble with it and in trouble. Let's this one go. Pass is complete to Hopkins. Hopkins staying in bounds. I think they're going to mark him down maybe a little before that. I thought maybe his right foot stepped out at around the, uh, the 36 yard line. Yeah, I thought they did too, Patrick, but they're, they, they're marking him where he finally went out the second time. I thought he went out the first time too. That's a nice pickup over the air for Hopkins. And another Mustang first down. Alan East moving the football. Here's Hole again right up the middle. Hole full head of steam. And he picks up about five. And I'll tell you what, if you can reliably pick up four, five, six yards on the ground, you're going to have a lot of success in football. Absolutely. And that, that's what I talked about uh, as one of the keys to the game. Alan East has got to mix it up, especially on first and second downs, have success and they'll be able to move the football up and down the field. Now second down and six. Hurstberger play action over the middle. The pass incomplete. Now flag comes out intended for Keaton Lehman, and that will most likely be pass interference and a first down. Yeah, and I thought Finkbaum arrived a little bit early there. He was all over him. Looks like that's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Be another first down for Allen East. Well, that's going to, uh, as you mentioned, give the Mustangs a first down and set them up with good field position once again. And Yeah, we talked about, uh, we, we flashed it early, but the officiating crew there, the referee, Gary Bailey, is the white hat. The umpire is Dennis Osborne, then Jamie Hilton, Sean Smith, Tyler Michael, and Andrew Darrow. They were kind of confirming there a little bit because uh, the yardage and the yard lines are a little bit hard to see. That's a little difficult to see the field tonight. So first and 10, ball around the 15 yard line and here is Hole once again up the middle. He'll pick up a couple of yards there. Logan Call in on the stop for Tri-Village. Man, I like Jack Hole. He's a tough runner, does not quit, does not give up, continues to drive until the whistle. Coming up on eight minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Allen East with a 3-0 lead, but the Mustangs on the march. Seeing if they can put in their first touchdown of the contest. Here's Hershberger again, rolling left, throw, pass, incomplete. A little miscommunication there. Carson Klum, the nearest Mustang to the ball. Plenty of Patriots, however, close to that one, and that'll bring up third down and eight. Yeah, I'm not so sure he didn't just throw that away, kind of threw it through the end zone. Looks like the two receivers that I saw were pretty well covered. Well, rolling to your left when you're a right-handed quarterback and throwing right is one of the more difficult things you can do in football. Well, absolutely, and, and the key to that, being able to do that, is to be able to plant your feet, turn your shoulders, and make the throw, and it's very hard to do that tonight. Third and long for the Mustangs. And now Hershberger is going to take this one right up the middle, picks up a nice block down at the five-yard line. And that's very close to a Mustang first down. Yeah, that's really close. That was a design draw play for the quarterback, Jake Hershberger. A big hole opened up there. Like to give a little credit to the offensive line right now. Left tackle, Boston Culbertson. Left guard, Troy Wildermuth. Center is Gage Wireman. Right guard, Lane Wildermuth. And R.J. Davies at the right tackle. They're doing an excellent job on this drive. And they're going to try and get a fourth down conversion here. Here's Hershberger. He's got the fourth down. And then some. It's going to be stopped at the one-yard line. First and goal for the Mustangs. Yeah, they're going to have first and goal at the one-yard line. So Allen East on the doorstep. Look for Hershberger and Hole to push him from behind, maybe. 
Here is Down Hole. Hole. He's going to push in for the touchdown. Jack Hole with another rushing touchdown, putting him up over 20 for the season. And it's a 9-0 Allen East lead over Tri-Village with 7.04 remaining in the second quarter. And a great drive for Allen East, able to turn that fumble into points. Kennedy up to attempt the extra point. And that one is up and good. Allen East takes a fumble and turns it into seven points. And with 7.04 remaining in the second quarter, it's an Allen East 10-0 lead over Tri-Village here on WOSN. Today's instant replay sponsor is Eastside Insurance, who provides you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. Our crew has done a great job of getting some of these replays in, and we've had uh, quite a few interesting plays in this one so far. Allen East with a 10-0 lead, and they're going to squib it away here. And the kick is fielded just shy of the 30-yard line, and that is where Tri-Village will take over for another drive. And one of the things that has been trouble for Tri-Village so far in this one uh, are the turnovers. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you're Allen East, you got to feel good right now. You're up 10-0. If you're Tri-Village, you know, this is something different for them. They're not used to playing from behind. They're normally uh, out early uh, in front of their opponents and, and, and uh, feeling comfortable about the, you know, where the game is headed. So this will be a little bit of a mental challenge, a tough test for them to see how they respond here. Tri-Village has not trailed very many times. In fact, the Patriots riding a 10-game winning streak right now, their last loss in week two of the season. Here is where were they run and a bevy of Mustangs, herd, herd of Mustangs in <laughs> the stop there. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> You know, I've seen Allen East, uh, this is the third time this year. They, they, they are a great defensive unit. There isn't really any standouts. I mean, there are some guys that, that lead the team in tackles, but they really play defense as a unit and have done a great job on Weir so far tonight. Keating in the gun on second and 10. Pass is up and incomplete. Looking for Justin Finkbein. And couldn't hit him, maybe a little high. Trey Hensley in on the stop for Allen East. Third down coming up. Yeah, good coverage. I I, uh, I think Allen East has one of the best secondaries around. Uh, their four guys, their corners, and their deep safeties are excellent. See if they can keep this drive alive first the third down rather third and long Keating pass complete to Finkbein there on the far side and able to stay in bounds was just attempted to be pushed out of bounds there by Hensley but he picks up a few more yards and that uh, I think that's Tri-Village's longest play of the night brings up a first down for the Patriots yeah Finkbein averages 12 yards a catch he's got five touchdowns that one was a little longer than 12 gives him a first down here's the side insurance replay and you see thought Hensley thought he pushed him out of bounds and ends up picking about 10 more yards up after that play action Keating scrambling in trouble gonna take off up the middle picks up about a yard or two and that's all Miller and Paxson in on the stop for Allen East yeah and that was our RPO play run pass option he, he, you see him uh, he was gonna hand the football off he pulled it thought he had a pass and then it was covered had nowhere to go with it made a little bit out of not much. See the guys on the field moving as much of the snow out of the area where they are as they can. Yeah, I thought it might wear away a little bit as the game wore on, but it doesn't seem to be doing so. Keating with time, now trouble, checks down, has a man open. Good for about an eight yard gain as Finkbein there makes the catch over the middle. Trey Hensley in on the stop. Finkbein with excellent hands. He's made several catches, and you do that in this kind of weather by catching the ball with your hands, not against your pads, not against your chest, but with your hands. And a timeout is, I think, I don't know if there's an injury. Keaton Miller, number one for Allen East, 
was uh, found without his helmet. The helmet was stuck together with another Tri-Village player, so they loosened him up, and then that means that Miller's going to have to sit out for a play. They're down and short for Tri-Village. Oh. And that's going to be third down and not short by the time this gets walked off. You know you're excited, you're ready to play, you just get going, and, but you you got to wait for the snap. Well, and, uh, you know, it might have been a play to him, and he was excited about it, and he forgot what the count was on. The count apparently was on two. He went on one. So third down and seven coming up. Keating back to throw. Pressure coming. Paxson in there for the stop. Check that. Gage Wireman, number 52. Paxson helping him out. But Gage Wireman in on the sack for Allen East. Well, and I get the feeling that Keating could probably escape that normally in the season if he was able to cut and pull out from there. But you can't really plant or move quickly out on this field. And he was drilled from behind. You know, Keating is not a statue out there. Five, uh, 484 yards rushing this season, four rushing touchdowns. So he does have some mobility back there. But, again, mobility is going to be greatly lessened. And this one is Tri-Village will punt and field it around the 15-yard line by Jacob Hershberger. Hershberger following his blockers. He's got one guy to beat, and he's going to beat Keating, and he's going to take it to the house. Touchdown, Mustangs. Wow. Jacob Hershberger on the 85-yard putt return for a touchdown, and Allen East has taken a 16-0 lead. Well, just a great job by Hershberger to show patience in this run back. He accelerates, shows his speed early, and then kind of uh, just shows some patience, eases up a little bit, waits for some blockers, and then finishes it off with an 85-yard touchdown. Now the kick try by Kennedy will make this a 17-0 Allen East lead. 4.02 left in the first half. Mustangs up, be back. Of course, the weather presenting some uh, interesting aspects of the game. Right now, a balmy 34 degrees, and it was, as we mentioned, 70 uh, here just a couple days ago. The nice thing, at least, the, the mercy about being Ohio is that usually you get the 70-degree temperature and the 30-degree temperature on the same day. Yeah. At least this time, we got a little bit of space in on it. And the uh, the snow has been coming through the area pretty much uh, all day today. And you see the radar, courtesy of uh, Ben Reif, who is a um, man of many hats, but also kind of our uh, own little weather nerd. Able to help us out <laughs> with that. But uh, snow coming in the area. Take a look at the bracket for Region 24. Of course, the winner of this game. Gets the winner of Marion Local Versailles. Marion Local ever right now up 7-3 on Versailles. And you heard me, Versailles scored points on Marion Local's defense. So they are the last team to have done that. Be interesting to see how that one wraps up when this is all said and done as the squib kick is recovered by Reese Miller. And now Tri Village. A little bit of a dust and up we're there. Getting a little, <laughs> little chippy here and well, you mentioned Marion Local Versailles. I had that game earlier this year, and really that it ended up 27-7, I believe, and, and, and it really was a close game. It was less than a one-score game with about two minutes to go, and there were a couple big plays at the end of the, that game. But uh, So that, that game, in my mind, uh, Versailles brings a challenge to Marion Local. And the previous games before that, I think the two games before that were decided by three points, something like that, as right. we get going again here. and. Weir is stood up by the Allen East defense as Miller, among others, in on the stop. We're picking up about two yards, it looks like they're going to give him. So that'll bring up second down and eight. And of course, the big question in Division Six is I mean, if you follow Division Six, if you follow the MAC, if you follow this kind of thing, you're, you're having a real difficult time not thinking that the road to the D6 state championship runs through Marion Local at some point. Well, you know, they've been there so many times over the past number of years that it's almost a given that you 
you've got to go through Marion Loco if you're going to get there. Nice catch there by Finkbein sliding to a stop as Keating had Lehman all over him, still able to make the throw and the catch, make it a third down and short. But, of course, if Versailles, if Versailles pulls off the upset tonight, you know, it's it, it's a little bit more wide open. And now you don't automatically plug Versailles into that. Of course, Versailles defending uh, D7 state champs. I guess they won't necessarily be defending this year. But it makes it interesting. And you got to think maybe whoever comes out of this has got a really good shot. Here's Keating in trouble and closing quickly as Lehman. And he's going to get... The sack as he gets some help from his friends on that one. Wireman coming in on the stop as well. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Well, Alan East is excellent at rallying to the football. They'll, they'll usually, uh, there'll be some early contact with one defensive player, but it, it's not very long after that. You see three or four more white hats come into the play. And it's very difficult to get any extra yards after contact against this defense. Keaton Lehman coming into the game with four sacks. Don't know if he'll get a sack or a half sack there, but he does help in forcing a fourth down as we are under two minutes remaining in the first half of this one, and we're going to have a timeout called by Tri-Village. Yeah, I think they're going to try to make a decision here. They're fourth and about five, right close to midfield. And I think, uh, you know, given the time, 147 left on the clock, they may be deciding whether they want to punt this football away or go for it. And you weigh your options if you're Tri-Village. You're going to have the football coming out in the second half. And maybe the calculus here that head coach Matt Hopkins is looking at is, hey, if we get this, Maybe something happens. We can put something together, some type of points. We're not down 17-0 at the half, and then we get the ball to start the second half. Of course, the other side of that is Alan East gets the ball back right here, and they put it in, and they make it 24-0 heading into halftime. Right. Well, this Tri-Village offense is definitely explosive. So if they can get the first down, look out for something. Looks like they're going to go ahead and punt it. They are showing punt, and indeed they do, and... Up. The flags everywhere is well, Alan that East. wasn't even running into the punter. That was <laughs> laying the punter out as Joseph Hole getting in there and trying to block it. But that is going to be a first down. So not exactly the way Tri-Village drew it up, but that's going to be the desired effect for the Patriots. Is I assume it's going to be roughing the kicker. Yes. As you yeah. say, very difficult to make the case for running into the kicker, even though the Allen East fans obviously not happy with the call. They want just running into the kicker. Um, no. Well, Alan was not running into the kicker. Yeah, they brought it, no question about it. They were looking to get a block there, and, 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 and I'm not so sure how that football made it through uh, without getting blocked, but it did, and uh, their momentum took them into the, yeah. the punter. That was a pretty easy call. I think the ball had better been in air for a second. In any case, this is a fresh set of downs for Tri-Village and life on this drive. And Keating keeps this one, and he is brought down. Brogan Paxson in on the stop, as well as Jacob Pinks for Allen East. Brings up second down. Yeah, Allen East has done a really good job on reading those option plays tonight and picking out who has the football and getting the stop. And that, that's really difficult to do. At the mesh point, a lot of times the quarterback can pull that or leave it in. Five wide for Keating here on second and long. Goes across the middle, has a think bind open for the catch. Makes a couple of guys miss, and he is down inside the 20. Round to the 16-yard line. Another first down for Tri-Village. And the Patriots have something going here with less than a minute remaining in the first half. Well, as you mentioned, Patrick, if they can get points on the board here before halftime, they get the football coming out. Get a great look here. Is he able to escape the clutches there of Pinks and get a few more yards and the officials are coming together and move the ball back a yard. So they had it spotted at the 15, they marked it to the 16.
Wide open set once again for Tri-Village. Keating alone in the backfield. Looking, is gonna tuck and run, but he is he still up. Got away from the pressure, now he's gonna throw this one into the end zone. The pass is caught for a TV TD. Finkbind there in the end zone off to the right side and Keating doing a Houdini impression, gets out of trouble and throws it up for the touchdown and Tri-Village gets points on the board before the half and that roughing the kicker, a huge penalty now in the late stages of this first half. Yeah, and I'm not sure how Keating got out of there. He was boxed in, somehow was able to uh, elude a couple Allen East defenders back there and make that throw. Perfect throw, touchdown. We got a game. Now Keating will kick the extra point and that one is up and good. 35 seconds left in the first half and it's a brand new ball game. Allen East 17, Tri-Village 7 will be back. Tri-Ville is getting on the board and it's a 17-7 Allen East lead with 35 seconds remaining in the first half. The Patriot Drive getting some additional life into it due to a personal foul against their punter on fourth down. And we'll see what Allen East decides to do here in the closing seconds. They've already got one kick return for a touchdown. This might be another one. Hole with Keating to beat and beats him. Touchdown Allen East. Wow. What a response by the Mustangs. Wow. Just some great blocking initially, and Hole finds a hole. Wow. There you go. Hole finds a hole, and it's an all-out sprint. Nobody can catch him. So just when Tri-Village responded with a score that thinking they go into the halftime with only a 10-point deficit, Allen Easton Hole responds. That's a huge play. A wise man said special teams and turnovers are going to be the key to this one tonight, and we have seen that. Two special team scores tonight for Allen East, and just when it looked like Tri-Village had crawled back into this one, and the snap is awry. Hershberger, well, he's going to go for two. He's going to throw this one up, and it is going to be batted down. So the extra point no good, 23-7. to seven. And we've got a flag down here. So we're going to take a look, replay of the return. And, with 22 seconds left to go. and Hole fields us on the hop. Yeah, and you can see a couple really good blocks up in front there. And now Hole, once he breaks through, it's just an all-out sprint. And, man, he's got wheels. Hole pretty fresh, and you saw him accelerate through the players there. And yeah, I'm not sure what the flag was yet, but... Yeah, I don't think they're, I think they're discussing it. There's a guy down. I don't know if that's in relation to what the officiating crew is going to discuss, but we saw that come out at the end of the play. Yeah, Patrick, it seemed to me like it was sort of after the play, like after the, the, the ball had already been batted down, then we saw the flag come out. So here's a look at the busted play. You see Hershberger throws it. It's batted down, and I think uh, huh? somebody must have said something. The, th the flag was thrown by the official that was nearest, Cade Wireman. I don't know if that if that's related or Wireman just happens to be there, if it has anything to do with him. Well, it must have been against Allen East because uh, they're, not re they're not doing, well, I take that back. It's going to be White. against Tri-Village. Allen East is going to kick the football off from the... Yeah, they're going to kick it off from the, the... Their own 45. Still never actually heard from the officiating crew what the penalty was. Obviously a... It a, was a, a personal foul of sorts. Yeah, my so guess... I don't know if someone my, was running their mouth or... That's my guess. Somebody said something uh, because it looked like the official was just walking towards the uh, end of the play there and uh, all of a sudden threw his flag. So, so we saw some chippiness between the two teams earlier in that last drive for Tri-Village and there was nothing There was nothing thrown, there were no flags, so maybe they went ahead and did something. And the onside kick in essence and Allen East, I think they have it back. They just decided to squib it, run towards it and see what happens and 
Well, I was just going to say, Patrick. Mustangs took advantage. Based on where the kickoff was, why not give it a shot there? And Alzheen has the football. Well, this could put a huge nail in it for Allen East if they're able to score, get some points on the board from this. So, let's yeah, let's take a look at the replay here. So it's just they just charge it and just a little too hot to handle for Seth Cook. And now Allen East has the football. First down, 19 seconds left. They've got a chance to score now. Hershberger's going to take off running and gets out of bounds. So he picks up seven yards and is pushed out around the 25-yard line. So plenty of time. Allen East has all three of their timeouts with 14 seconds remaining. So Allen East has some opportunities here. They can run out, run out of bounds. They've got all their timeouts, as you mentioned. So they can take a couple shots here before time runs out. And they were wanting an offsides call, I think, against Tri-Village. And they won't get it down to 10 on the play clock here. Yeah, it looks like number three Logan Call came across the line there. So Herzberger, he's going to put this one up, and the pass incomplete, and a yep. flag comes out. So pass intended for Hopkins, and another flag came out after that as well over there by the four-yard line. I don't know if that's necessarily related. This is going to be pass interference, I would imagine, against... Dry Village. Yeah, I think, I think no question about that. I think there's a little frustration that's going on with well, Dry Village right now. The well, they're coming back to the original line of scrimmage. They've signaled against Dry Village, so they're going to mark that off. That's a 15-yard penalty. Uh, now at that point, I think it's half the distance to the goal. No, they're going to mark 15. I think it's 15 yards. Here's where they're going to put it. They're going to put it around the 13-yard <laughs> line, and Alan East is going to call a timeout, which I think we can all agree everyone needs. Nine seconds remaining in the first half, and let's recap here just a little bit, Scott, because what an interesting minute this has been in game time. It's been about 15 minutes in real life, about an interesting minute. Alan East with a 17-0 lead, possibly – with an opportunity to tack some more onto that. Tri-Village able to hang on to the football through a personal foul. They get seven points. Looks like it's going to be 17-7 to at the half. Allen East returns the kick for a touchdown, making it 23-7. to Essentially an onside kick. Wasn't drawn up that way, but Allen East gets the football back, and now they got a chance to score to make it 30-7. to have I missed anything? Well, that onside kick was, was uh, really the result of a penalty that Tri-Village committed after the two-point try was sort of uh, muffed. That's absolutely right. And now Hershberger looking for it, looking for Hopkins, and can't hit him. Back of the end zone incomplete. Down to five seconds. So the decision here, if they want to try, they've got time probably for one more pass in the end zone. Now they're going to bring Kennedy in and attempt the field goal. So this is going to be a 30-yard field goal. Well, Braylon Kennedy is an excellent field goal kicker. Outstanding field goal kicker, and I would say in normal conditions, no problem. This is a chip shot for him. But, uh, you know, the question will be of that plant foot. Can he, can he get stability? Snap down, and the kick is up, and it looks good from here. No, nope. they missed it. A little bit left. That's why I'm not down there at the goal post looking at it. So it is wide left. They throw another flag. And I think there was something they wanted in – Head coach Joel Billings is telling his guys to get back on the sideline. And there is a flag on the field, so the officials are going to talk this over. Well, and the question is, normally uh, the half can't end on a penalty, so there may be one more untimed down. And if this is against Tri-Village, Allen East will get another shot at it. It looked to me, Patrick, like when the official flew the fl threw the flag, he looked right at an Allen East player that may have said something. Well, I got to tell you, some of the body language I've seen from head coach Joel Billings, he has not been terribly happy with some of the composure on his guys. Dead ball, personal foul. It's against Tri-Village. 
Uh, he said it was on number 24, and he said the penalty will be assessed at the beginning of the second half, which is so a interesting development here as both teams head off the field for halftime. So we're just going to leave it there. 23 to 7, Allen East on top of Tri Village. Second half coming up here on WOSN. Wrapping up here at Bill Fountain here at Accu Sports Stadium, the home of the Chieftains. We got a 23-7 lead, Allen East on top of Tri-Village. Patrick Kamler, Scott Nurse here with you as we get ready for the second half. And an interesting uh, series of events ending the first half. There was a dead ball foul against Tri-Village. And in the case of a dead ball foul, so the play was dead, the half was over, and it was, the penalty will be assessed on Tri-Village of the kickoff. So as you look at the screen, Allen East will be kicking off once again from the Tri-Village 45-yard line. Now, we saw something like this happen toward the end of the first half, and Allen East wasn't an onside kick per se, but they kicked the ball short, and then they all clustered like they are now and ran toward the guy who tried to field the kick, which just happened to be Seth Cook at the end of the first half, and Allen East... Uh, had another opportunity for points. It was a missed field goal, but and we might have something like that again here to start the second half, Scott. Well, we've had a lot of excitement in this game already, for no no doubt about it. So I wouldn't be surprised, but I I, I would think that Allen East probably is going to want to kick this football deep and try to pin Tri Village, not give them good field position early in the first half or early in the second half. Well, they're spreading out, so we'll see how they decide to approach it here. Braylon Kennedy doing the kicking honors. And we are ready to go for half number two, and this is gonna be a, a short squibber and a little trouble with it. And Triville is just gonna fall on the football as that one gets out to the 15 yard line, 15, 16 yard line. And that's where the Patriots will start. Patriots having a little trouble getting any type of offensive rhythm going. They had one really solid drive that was kept alive by a personal foul on fourth down. But ever since then, uh, Tri-Village has had a couple of turnover issues and they've really struggled to put together uh, solid drives throughout the first half. Yeah, they have. And uh, unfortunately then they've, uh, they've coupled that with some defensive lapses that have allowed Allen East to get some long, big play scores. And uh, now they find themselves in a big hole, 23-7. Nice snap to get us started. That's going to be Reed Weir who takes the handoff and he picks up a nice run out to the 26 yard line. That is pretty close to his longest run of the night so far. And that will move the chains for the Patriots. Well, you know, we mentioned coming in that he had 1,384 yards rushing, um, but we didn't see a lot of carries by Reed Weir in the first half. We saw a lot more throwing by Braden Keating. Uh, which, which was a little surprising given the weather conditions. So maybe uh, maybe we'll see a little more of Weir in the second half. Four wide and got Brogan Paxson to jump off sides. That's going to make it first down and five coming up for Tri-Village. So one thing you want to see, if you're a Tri-Village fan, one of the things you want to see the Patriots do is string together positive plays and 11-yard run on first down and now a penalty to make a short for another first down is the direction you want to see so far. Now Keating on first and five and is going to tuck and run up the middle. Gets some space, gets a first down. He's dropped at around the 41-yard line. That's good for another Patriot first down. Yeah, a good tackle by Jacob Hershberger there. Or Keating would have still been running possibly. He had gotten through that first wave of defense. And Jacob Hershberger, as I mentioned, the defensive secondary for Allen East is outstanding. They're not only really good against the pass, but they're excellent at run support as well. Indeed, they have. Pursuit of the football has been terrific so far for the Mustangs. And now on first down, this is Weir again on another carry. And making some guys miss was dragging hole with him as he gets across midfield to the 49. And that is going to be... I think another Tri-Village first down. So the Patriots making some adjustments at halftime and they are paying off so far. Yeah, I think the, uh, the the most noticeable adjustment here in the first three or four plays is Weir's running the football. And finding some more gaps there and now four wide. Weir in the backfield, another first down and Weir takes the handoff again and still 
moving forward. He picks up about four yards on that carry as a number of Mustangs in on the stop. Jacob Pinks among them. Also, Wireman, Gage Wireman getting down there as well. And that'll bring up second down and about six. Coming up on 10 minutes remaining in the third quarter, a 23-7 lead for Alan East on the state scoreboard. Now Keating in the gun, hands off to Weir once again, finding some space in the middle as Hershberger brings him down for the tackle. Another Tri-Villas first down, and they are moving the ball on this defense here in the second half. Yeah, this is just straight power football. You can see the snow coming down still a little bit here, and Weir is just straight ahead. Power football right into the heart of Allen East defense, and it's successful, another first down. The snow has been consistently falling here, not much in the way of accumulation, and here is Keating on the keeper right up the middle. Bring Keating on the carry. Yeah, that was an option play there. He had the option to hand that football five off to number 25, uh, Reed Ware. And it uh, looked like five. Ware was losing his footing there, so he opted to pull it and run straight ahead. Picked up about four or five yards. Second down, empty backfield again. Here's Keating, back to throw. Has time across the middle, pass incomplete. Looking for Finkbein across the middle. A number of guys in there on defense. Jacob Hershberger among them in on the stop. Also, they're playing uh, deep center was Caden Hedrick. Well, I'm not sure about that, but it, it looked to me like it might have been tipped. I think it was. It was the, tipped. Yeah, by one of the linebackers. I think Keaton Lehman may have got a hand on that football. So third down and long up here for the Patriots. Keating hand off to Weir, and Weir met in the backfield and stopped. Alan East finally getting some penetration there as Jack Hole gets the TFL, and that'll bring up fourth down. And you have to wonder if perhaps uh, we're going to have a stoppage of play here as Reed Weir goes back down, and looks like he might be hurt. Yeah, he looks like he's in a lot of pain there. We get a look at the replay here, and you're going to see number one as well, Keith Miller, come in and make the tackle. And it looks like Weir, Weir stood up as you see him walking back, and then he just kind of goes down. Looks like his back, maybe. Say maybe a back cramp. Might be, might be the case here. We'll step away and take a timeout. Allen East on top, 23-7. to We'll be back. Stop in the sights on Harding Highway in Lima for your discount groceries, meat packs, deer processing, full service meat, and deli. Have a large event. Stites also caters. They are the scoreboard sponsor for tonight's contest. Here on fourth down, Triville is going for it and knocked out of the air by Cade Wireman. So taking a chance on fourth down. Thought maybe four down territory for Tri Village. And they do not get it, forcing the turnover on downs once again to the Mustangs. Yeah, and good to see there, Reed Ware walked off the field on his own power, but he looked a like he left a little ginger. So we'll have to keep an eye out there to see if he's gonna return to action tonight, but obviously a very big key to that Tri-Village offense. I think he's being attended to there on the sideline. Could tell me it was a cramp or something more significant. Certainly hope he's okay. Here's Jack Hole on first down, and he will pick up a couple of yards. Yeah, you, you see in that uh, replay there, that close-up, you can see the snow is beginning to pick up a little bit. It's just a steady, fine mist of the snow, but there's a little wind that's moving left to right on your screen there. A shot of the stands, this is the Allen East side. They were the home team and a, a hearty group, lots of hats and blankets, and there are a couple guys here close to our broadcast position, basically set up a duck blind. Yeah, they did. They set up a little half tent out there, and uh, they looked like they were warm and enjoying the game. Allen East calling timeout. 7.56 remaining here in the third quarter. We'll step away. 23-7, to Allen East on top. Second down and eight. There's Berger on the keeper. Picking his spot, and 
and he picks up about four yards on that carry. Reese Miller in on the stop for Tri Village. That'll bring up a third down and long. Yeah, I don't know if it's me or what, but it, it seems like Jake Hershberger is looks faster than everyone on the field right now. Normally, he's pretty quick, pretty athletic, but he seems to have adjusted to this snow situation pretty well. A number of guys were out very early um, before warm-ups. Looks like they were trying to get accustomed to it. Here's Hole. Kind of makes his own hole, and he gets enough for the first down, pushing ahead near midfield. He's going to be down at around the 47-yard line. Alan East has done a really nice job, Patrick, of controlling the line of scrimmage, controlling the clock, and really eating up time of possession. They haven't given Tri Village the football for very long tonight. The ball control has been one of the positives for Alan East so far in this contest. Under seven minutes here in the third quarter. Hersberger looking across the middle, hits Lehman. Uh, sorry, take that back, that's hole on the slant. And a nice pick up over the middle, through the air, and another first down for Allen East. Well, that was just an excellent throw by Hersberger. I mean, he put that ball on a rope, had some velocity on it, perfect throw, a little inside slant there, and hole, hole was able to hold on to it. Another first down. Mustangs quickly back to the line. Hersberger gonna keep this one. Has a seam, gets the first down marker, gets right to the marker, and then goes out of bounds. And probably going to be a first down. Here's another look at it. Yeah, and it looks to me like uh, official threw a flag as well here. Hershberger's just got speed. He looks like he's just a little bit uh, faster gear than the rest of the guys on the field. And judging by where that flag was thrown, we see it there. Looks like this is going to be in the neighborhood of holding. And it is coming back. So they'll repeat first down, and that'll make it first down. And I'm going to say around 18. I'm going to say first down and 20. Now Hershberger rolling out to his right. Throws pass intended for Keaton Lehman, incomplete. Hershberger really trying to thread the needle there. He was surrounded by Patriots. Yeah, and he almost got it in there. It's a little bit low. I think in uh, normal conditions, Keaton probably comes up with that ball. But a little difficult out here to hold on to that tonight. Had more Patriots around him than Cornwallis at Yorktown. Wow. Something for you history nerds out yeah, there. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say a little history. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Here's Hole on the carry, second down and long. Nice spin move and picking up a lot of those yards back, about 10 yards on that carry, and they'll make it third down and not quite so long. Yeah, I think they're going to be left with about third and about 10, 11 maybe. This might be four down territory here, a little bit too long to kick a field goal. A little bit too short for a punt. Third and 11. Take handoff, first burger, rolling, throwing, pass is incomplete. Looking for Lehman in that spot once again. And I'll refer you to the last Patriot uh, joke I made. Same thing, fourth down. Yeah, and it looks like the punt team is coming on. I wasn't sure if they would punt it here, but it uh, looks like they're going to go ahead and punt it. Of course, you always got to be a little concerned when your quarterback is your punter. So Kennedy, Braylon Kennedy, the kicker, has done some punting, but uh, Jacob Hirschberger does the majority of them, and he gets this one up. And, of course, the goal is going to be to pin him deep, and they're going to field this one. Finkbein fields it around the 10, gets to about the 13. So... That is where Tri-Village will start. You know, we talked about this before the game, Patrick, but we haven't really talked about it here. At the, you know, there's a lot of snow on the field, and, and it continues to accumulate. It's, it's becoming more and more difficult to tell where the yard markers are. But um, apparently there was no equipment available to clear the snow before the game. So we began the game with snow on the field, 
And uh, as we mentioned, snow continues to fall, making it hard to see. They had the shovels that they used to clear the uh, lines, as you see, and then some space on the sidelines. That's about it. Keating have a little time to throw, but not enough. Cade Wireman in there on the sack. Cade Wireman has been excellent all year for Allen East. So that'll make it second down and 15. And going back to the snow earlier and the field conditions, and of course, the snow is continuing to fall, and there doesn't seem to be a ton of additional accumulation, but it's going to make it slicker. It's going to make it colder, and it's going to be very difficult if you are down to be able to mount any kind of comeback. Here is Keating rushing out to the 15-yard line, and you know, 23 to 7 lead in a regular game is is not a it's not a big lead. It's a couple of possessions, but in a game like this, where the field conditions are are not great and the offenses are, generally speaking, stymied. Allen East has two special team touchdowns tonight. 23-7, uh, I'm not saying it's, good, it's a lock, but that's going to be a lot for Tri-Village to overcome here in the last 16 minutes and change of this game. Right, especially in the passing game as you get a good look here. Passes. Looks, it's caught. Yep, complete there. Pass Ready? caught by Lucas Howell, number eight. But again, you're absolutely right, Patrick. It's very difficult to mount a comeback in this kind of weather when you when you throw the football a lot, and it's a big part of your offense. So they move the sticks, first down, Patriots. Coming up on four minutes remaining in the third quarter. 23-7, Allen East with the lead. Keating with the handoff to Weir, who has returned to the game. Glad to see him back in. And we had a couple of turnovers early, but uh, the turnovers have, have sort of, uh, they fixed that issue. Tri Village had a couple of turnovers early. We haven't seen anything lately though. I'm sure ball control was preached and security was preached quite a bit by Matt Hopkins at halftime. Here is a stop for a modest gain. We're on the carry. Paxson and Wireman in on the stop. Third down. Well, Coach Billing said that, you know, defensively, he said what we really want to do is we want to create pressure to disrupt the timing in their passing game. Offensively, the running game will take care of itself, but they want to create pressure, and they've done that tonight so far. Here's Weir in the handoff on third down and does not get close to the first down. Pinks and Wireman in on the stop. And that'll bring up fourth down. I would imagine a punting situation here. Looks like they are going to go ahead and punt. Looks like this would be fairly risky territory to try and go for it on fourth down. And you can see players trying to clear snow away just to get their footing under them to begin the play. Punt is off, Hershberger back to field it. It's a little shorter than he was expecting. And this is gonna roll out to the 36 yard line where Finkbein will down it. And Allen East with a, not a short field per se, but not terrible field position as they will start their next drive with 221 remaining in the third quarter. And of course, Allen East with a 23 to seven lead and what has been the key for the Mustangs in having this lead has been what all coaches preach. Defense and special teams. And their defense has forced two fumbles on the night. And their special teams, mainly their kick return, their punt return. They've got a punt return for a touchdown and a kick return for a touchdown. And that right now is the difference in this one. Yeah, and that's what you see a lot of times in games with odd conditions like that. Games that are really raining and wet or snowy like this is tonight. Here's Hole with a nice run, and he's off to the races. Only Finkbein to beat him, and Finkbein making the tackle there at the 24-yard line as Hole breaks that one open. You see Finkbein going for the, the strip there, but Hole, nice hands, able to hang on to it, and a big play for Allen East to start this drive and a first down. Yeah, Hole happy with that. You saw him get up and point for the first down. He was pretty happy with that run. Quickly back to the line are the Mustangs. 
Ball just over the 25 yard line as Hershberger looking to the sideline for instruction. And again, running the football like this, the clock continues to run. And quick pass out. And nothing doing there is Noah Finkbein. The 5'11 freshman in on the stop. Luke, uh, Joseph Hole with the catch. Hole had the aforementioned putt return that we talked about earlier in the game. Sorry, kick return. He will have the kick return. Hershberger has a putt return for a touchdown. And now Jack Hole with another carry. You know, I just, get the, five yards here. I just get the feeling, Patrick, that Jack Hole, he likes this kind of a game. You know, he's kind of one of those true football players that just, uh, you know, he, he didn't even know it's cold outside. And uh, enjoying this football, you see a little stutter step there, and then he just lowers his shoulders, picks up about five, four, four yards there on the carry. Over 200 rushes this season. Uh, over 1,200 yards and 19, or over 19 touchdowns, and you're just kind of built different, and you like this, these conditions, as you said. Here's Hersberger, and pass is almost intercepted. He got his hands on it. Did Justin Finkbein, or rather number 25? That's Reed Weir. That's the running back, and yeah, and I, you know, I'm, I'm going to say this, but I, I'm guessing in normal conditions he pulls that ball in because he had it with both hands there and he's just not able to hold on to it. It's, the ball's probably a little slick, slicker than normal. He just could not pull it in. So Mustang's catching a break there. And now on fourth down, Hershberger going for it and has space up the middle. Thought it was going to be a for sure first down. Ball comes out and advances forward. And Allen East recovers it, and that is going to work to the advantage of the Mustangs as I believe they have enough for the first down. That ball was recovered by R.J. Davies, number 72. And the sophomore was Johnny on the spot. Here's another look at it. And you see Hershberger here at the end of this. He designed draw up the middle. He tries to stiff arm, and then two, two guys run into each other. The ball comes loose. What I like best about the end of this play, it, it's not in that replay. But uh, Hershberger helped Weir back up. Good sportsmanship. I like that being shown by both teams in this half. Hole with a, another short carry. And actually, Alan East got that play going before the uh, sticks were set. Because not a first and goal situation yet. Go first to 10. Well, actually, now it's second and nine. Alan East able to get a first down without a touchdown if that is needed. And they will not get the playoff before the third quarter comes to an end. Three of the books here from Bell Fountain and Allen East holding on to their 23 to seven lead. 12 more minutes of football coming up on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay sponsor Eastside Insurance provides you the best service and the best coverage at the best possible price. Back into the fourth quarter and hole with a pass from Hershberger getting all the way down to the Looks like around the three yard line, he's gonna be short of the first down. And a nice way to start the fourth quarter. We are just underway in the fourth quarter. Patrick Hamler, Scott Nurse here with you on WOSN and streaming live on NFHS this evening. Glad to be with you, bringing this Region 24 semifinal matchup. Here is Hole again, diving into the end zone and a touchdown for Allen East. Big hole for hole right there. Offensive line is really doing a nice job for Allen East tonight. They really are. They have asserted themselves in this game and they have taken a 29 to seven lead in this one. Here is another replay and this is, we've seen hole do this all game, just barreling down, getting the yards that were needed and it's really difficult to stop him if he only needs three yards. Well, when you get the freight train moving north and south like that, and he's uh, you know, he's a load and he's strong, he's gonna pick up yards, positive yards. And the kick is up, and it is good. Allen East with a 30 to seven lead over Tri Village. 11 and a half minutes remaining in this one. We'll be back. Welcome back, 32 seven, Allen East on top of Tri-Village. Mustangs putting together a solid drive and now see the Allen East players jumping up and down the sideline and 
It could be for rooting the team on, but it could just be for keeping warm at this point. Here's Justin Finkbein on the return, but not getting much of anything. Cade Wireman there on the stop. Well, Allen East has it going tonight, that's for sure. They really do. Um, you know, they've been pretty successful in all phases of the game tonight. They have a punt return for touchdown, a kickoff return for touchdown. The offense has driven down the field and scored twice. Defensively, they've done a pretty good job. The uh, uh, Ohio's leading score, uh, scoring team, uh, or the region scoring team, uh, they've held them in check, only seven points on the board. So a really good job in all four phases thus far in the game. So here's Keating on first down. Pass is going to be short. So the winner of this contest, and it's looking like it's Allen East at this point, is going to match up with the Marion Local Flyers. Marion Local uh, on top of Versailles right now. And unless the Tigers mount some crazy comeback, it is going to be Marion Local in the regional final. And, you know, that was kind of the expectation heading into this season that Marion Local was going to be not necessarily regional final, but this was going to be a, a state uh, championship team. Tell you more here in a second is... Keating fakes the handoff, in trouble, hit as he throws. This one duck in the air, and Trey Hensley coming up with the interception and has a little bit of space, and he is brought down. Fink by making the tackle, rather, uh, yeah, Fink by making the tackle, and that is the third turnover for Tri Village. The turnovers have been a real bugaboo for them. They've been huge, and I've been talking about that secondary. Uh, every game that I've seen Allen East, the secondary for Allen East defense is outstanding. So there you see the Region 24 bracket. Again, as you said, Marion Local. Uh, not official yet as you're uh, watching this later on WOSN, but Marion Local probably going to take for sales. They're up 28 to 3 as of right now. Allen East on top of Tri Village and just getting a turnover. So Marion Local, Allen East. And again, as we were going to say, you really felt like Marion Local was going to be good. I think they've surpassed a lot of people's expectations to how good, how dominant that they've been, particularly this last half of the season. They've been really dominant, and, and they started early with their very first game with Wapak, who's obviously a very tough opponent as well, and they've kind of just rolled from there. But, you know, give credit to Allen East. They, they have uh, shown that they are a pretty good football team too. So if, if those two meet, um, I, I think it's going to be a really competitive game. Here's Hole on first down, and nothing doing as Reese Miller gets in there on the stop. And I haven't said Reese Miller's name a whole lot tonight. He came in as the leading tackler for Tri Village. They have just been away from where he's usually been out on the field. But indeed, and you know, regardless of, of who else matches up with Marion Local, it, it's going to be a tough road to hope for whoever has to play the Flyers. And it looks like it's going to be Allen East, unless Tri Village does something here. Hole with a nice carry out close to the 20 yard line, just short, short of the 20 yard line. You know, we're gonna have Marion Local and Allen East matching up. And you gotta think if, if, if for sales was maybe the best team and in all respect to Allen East, I'm not saying anything against the Mustangs, but if for sales is possibly the best team that they're gonna face the rest of the season, and it was like pretty much a pretty handy win. You know, you don't wanna set anybody up for failure, but you have to think, man, who who matches up against Marion Local the rest of the season? Yeah, and it's really difficult, uh, you know, but you, you, you got to think that Allen East has shown that they've got playmakers, though. They've got a quarterback who's, who's dynamic, who can throw, who can run. Uh, and, and in normal conditions, or at least conditions where you have good footing, uh, he's a really dangerous weapon to have. And then you've got Hole, who can pick up those tough inside yards. I think Allen East line play is excellent. They've, they've shown to me uh, in the three or four games that I've seen them to be excellent. Their defense is outstanding, especially the secondary. Turnover on downs, gets the football back to Tri-Village, and Keating directing traffic, and the ball coming loose after the completion. And will this be ruled an incomplete pass? It will. So not enough time to possess the football. Ends up bailing out the Patriots as they were about to have their fourth turnover of the game. Yeah, I thought he caught that ball and, and took a step, but uh, they ruled it incomplete. Never really had control of the football. Here's another look at it. And there is the. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, good defensive play there. Yep. Really good defensive play by number 31 for Allen East, Jacob Pinks. So second down, Keating back, 
Mustangs rushing four, almost getting home. Keating having to scramble. Lehman closing in, pass incomplete, looking for Finkbein once again, and just not able to connect with the senior. Well, you know, uh, Tri-Village obviously a very good team, but uh, they just can't seem to get anything going. They can't really string anything together. They haven't been able to sustain a long drive really all night long, uh, other than the one scoring drive that they had earlier. Um, and, and credit the Allen East defense for that. The Allen East defense really has neutralized uh, Tanner Prince. He was Tri-Village's, uh, Braden Keating's favorite target coming into this contest, 42 receptions and just have not called his name very often in this one. Timeout on the field. Nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Allen East on top, 30-7. to seven. We'll be right back. Welcome back to a snow-covered AccuSports Stadium. Dry Village, Allen East, Region 24 semifinal. Allen East on top, 30-7 to seven in this one. Keating dropping back, pass complete to Finkbein. And he is going to have the first down. And you see that play right there, in my mind, is very representative of that Allen East defense. Really good form tackle, really good fundamental tackle, and you saw three or four other Allen East players rally to it to make sure that uh, that game was minimized and held uh, to, to just a, a few yards. It's fourth and about two, and they're going for it. Yep, so they marked him short than where I thought he was. So fourth down, and they will go for it. All four down territory, and here's the catch to Fink. That's Bein. a fumble. Ball comes out, and Keaton Lehman on top of it. Are they going to say incomplete? Nope. They gave it to him. Well, in any case, it was going to be Allen East football. Yep. Whether it was incomplete or complete and a fumble. So that will be the fourth turnover of the night for Tri-Village. Yeah, that was a completed pass, and it uh, looked like the official gave that to him. You could see he caught the football, and then it was knocked loose. And the line judge on our side signaled a turnover. So Keaton Lehman with the fumble recovery. So that's the fourth turnover tonight for the Allen East Mustangs. So first down around the 37 yard line. Here's Hole, Joseph Hole this time and kind of a change of pace back and no doubt fresher legs is he barrels ahead for a close to first down yardage. Yeah, must run in the family because he has no problem loading his shoulders too and, and uh, driving through a defender you see here. Good look at number eight. He just accelerates through the hole and then lowers his shoulder and bang, picks up about five or six yards after contact. First contact on that was Reed Weir and Weir a little slow to get up on that play so he might still be feeling the effects of the back injury that was received by him earlier in the game. And now here is Jack Hole on first down, yeah, on second that, down rather, and he squirts ahead for a first down. Yeah, that lunge at the end there was just enough to get him across. Sticks are moving again. The clock continues to run here as soon as they set the sticks. So Allen East obviously in no hurry and should the Mustangs tack on another touchdown, we would be in a running clock situation. I would have never guessed that. Patrick, coming down to this game, I'm thinking both teams are 11 and one. Two excellent football teams with a lot of success. Here's Hole again, fresh set of downs, bouncing it to that left side and he slides down. And he will pick up about eight yards on that. So a touchdown with the extra point, of course, would make it a 30 point lead for Allen East. And we'd have that running clock and you know, that, that is a surprise when you get to this level, you think, you know, all of them are gonna be competitive. We got a flag on the field here, and they're gonna walk this back. Well, and I'm surprised we're even talking about that too, Patrick, given the, the, the conditions that they're playing with tonight. I thought scoring would be very, very low tonight. Um, you know, especially when we started the game out, it was a 3-0 game. I thought maybe, you know, a, a, a 14 to 10 or, a, you know, a 10 to seven type game might be in the making because of the weather and Allen East has risen up and, and with a few special teams plays has, has really broken this game wide open. On first in a bunch, Hershberger over the middle, pass caught by Keaton Lehman and he's gonna flip it to the end zone. And a little bit of a snow angel there by the senior. You gotta love it. 
You know, uh, I, I talked about him as one of the keys to the game. I thought, uh, you know, he would come up with a big play tonight, uh, and he certainly does there, no question about it. The biggest play is the flip at the end with the snow angel. I here's, mean, that, that's hard to do. Here's a replay of it again. There you see Lehman with the catch, and then it flips into the end zone. Unfortunately, that's still only a six-point touchdown. You don't get style points, but that's right. good effort on that anyway. I imagine his coach is going to talk to him about that, uh, you know. But it's exciting, you know, when you're a senior and you're coming out here, you're advancing in the, uh, in the playoffs, and you get to the first round, the second round, you start getting closer to where you can, you know, smell the opportunity to go to the state. Uh, tournament, uh, you know, it's got to feel good for these guys. Allen East will make their second ever trip to the regional final. Their first trip, of course, last year where they fell to Coldwater, and they will have another MAC team ready to greet them this year. And this extra point is up, and it is good. 37-7, Allen East on top of Tri-Village, and we will have a running clock in Bell Fountain. Welcome back to Aki Sports Stadium. We've got a lot of equipment that's going to need dried off after uh, after this game here tonight. Both teams are going to have a lot of equipment that needs dried off here. Aki Sports Stadium is the site of this one. Allen East with a 37 to seven lead over Tri Village, and it has been a a combination of solid play by Allen East and the elements as well. The snow has been uh, almost in effect a 12th man out there for the Mustangs, at least it's affected Tri-Village more. The Patriots, four turnovers, and Alan East has uh, translated that into points here in the second half. Another line drive, yeah, they've pass been, the second baseman. They've been doing, they've been doing this all night uh, with the idea that it minimizes the opportunity for a return, and it's been pretty successful. It seems like it's been working. You know, um, not to take advantage of what we see on the screen here, but a slippery slope. You know, sometimes sometimes when a team uh, has a couple big plays and gets their emotions going, and you know, in high school football, that can really take you a long way. And I think that's what happened tonight here. Alan East got a couple of huge plays that really sparked them early and sort of started that downhill uh, run for them in this game. I have a feeling that, uh, you know, Tri-Village is a much better team than, than 37-7. to and, and by the same token, you know, we talked earlier about Marion Local, one of those situations where, you know, if Alan East can bring this kind of an effort to that game as well and get things going in their favor, and they've got playmakers, you know, you never know, you never know how things can change quickly. Here's Keating on the carry on first down, and he'll pick up about seven yards. And, you know, that's, you know, one of the things that you look for, of course, in any matchup and as you're broadcasting it. You look for competitive matchups. You look for good games. And uh, Allen East, Marion Local is, is one of those where, you know, both teams do a lot of things very similarly. They run uh, somewhat similar offenses, and they've got similar strengths. So here's a flag down here. I think this came in after the play. Well, and both teams are obviously very well coached. I mean, I, I, I've seen that, and you saw uh, Coach Billings early in this game getting his guys back in order. They got, got a little, it got a little. Uh, we had a couple dust ups early, and and a uh, little bit of heated emotions on the field. Got those under control. Got the players back doing what they're supposed to be doing, and, and uh, you know things look good right now. So a sideline warning given to Tri Village. And now we'll get going here, a second and short. Keating back to pass, in trouble. Paxa giving pressure, and he is hit at the end as he throws the ball incomplete. Well, I mentioned uh, Coach Billings said one of the things that they really wanted to focus on doing tonight was disrupting that pass game defensively. They have really done a good job of that, both on the rush side in, in getting pressure on, on the quarterback, but also defensively by not allowing the quarterback to have anywhere to throw to uh, the combination of those two has been really successful. Yeah, they have not given Keating an opportunity to look comfortable and even throwing on the run, which looks like it's something that he does and does quite well. He just hasn't been able to look comfortable doing that. He's been very uh, effective here at slipping away and Tanner Prince making the catch. 
Again, as we mentioned, have not heard a whole lot from him tonight as he finally uh, makes a catch. I think that's probably only his second catch of the game. Yeah, and he came in as, as the number one receiver with 47 catches in 11 games. That means he was getting about five a game. And uh, again, that secondary for now, Allen East. And, you know, Jacob Hershberger is a big piece of that back there playing center field. He has the opportunity to kind of sit back and, and look for receivers and go and make plays. Pass swatted away by Trey Hensley. That was intended for Mason Weatherington. Yeah, and it's about now with about four minutes left in the game. If you're Tri-Village, it starts feeling a little bit cold out here, a little cold and damp. Yeah. And if you're out in the east, you're warm. You know, you don't even, you don't even know it's snowing anymore. It feels good. You could play all night. Here's Keating looking to throw. And Lehman getting in there. Flag coming out at the end of the play as he gets the sack. Yeah, it might have been a hold on the left end for Tri-Village there trying to protect the quarterback. So in pregame warm-ups, Keaton Lehman for Allen East number four had his jersey pulled up halfway a la Ezekiel Elliott. And I went over to him. I said, is that is that the look you're going to support for the whole game? And he says, I don't even feel like it's cold out here. It's like they're telling me it's cold and wet, but I don't really feel like it's it's cold at all. And when you're out there, and no, more importantly, when you're winning, when you're having a fun, having fun, having a good time, and he was the guy doing the snow angel, uh, yeah, you don't feel the cold, but it's uh, – It'll start setting in here pretty soon as we wrap this game up. Well, and a lot of times, too, that's a mental mindset. You know, you, you tell yourself when you're going out to play that, you know, it's not raining, it's not snowing, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do my job, and I'm going to do it well. And uh, if you have that mindset, you will. That penalty backed up Tri-Village to uh, second down in a midnight ride. <laughs> yeah. That's my second history joke. Of yeah, the day. that's I a, usually I, I got that zero. Oh, good, yeah, good. Is that, is that, is that right. a Paul Revere reference yeah. from the? Yeah, very yes, it good. was. My grandmother used to tell me a Paul Revere joke, but it was a little different than that. <laughs> anyway, I tell you what, if I if I have been it. able to be compared to your grandmother in a broadcast, yes. I have done well. Third yeah. and seventeen, <laughs> Keating in trouble again, and Hole coming in there for the sack. And this is how it has been tonight. Not a lot of time back there for Keating to throw. And another sack by this Allen East defense. And it's fourth and a bunch. Well, that front four for Allen East is so athletic and they're fast. They're quick. They're not only uh, you know strong on the run game, but they're quick off the ball. And then they got speed to run down uh, the quarterback there. And Keating, obviously Keating's got a lot of speed as well, but not able to escape that. We got a minute 18, clock continues to run. So they will run the clock all the way down and Tri Village will take a timeout before the play clock goes down to zero. So we are at a minute 13 remaining in this one. Allen East is gonna be moving on. They will take on Marion Local. And if you're out of town, you can't get WOSN. WOSN now streaming 24-7 online on Roku and Apple TV. Download our Roku channel and Apple TV app and or you can do you can do and but you can do pick your favorite and subscribe. A hundred dollar donation allows you to watch anywhere in the world. Visit app.wosn.tv to sign up. It is a wonderful gift for those on your gift list for Christmas, for Hanukkah, for whatever you want to yeah, buy things for people. I, I like the spinning Christmas trees there. That was nice. Yeah. You know, it is the season. I'm a little dizzy, though. <laughs> Fourth and a bunch. Keating directing traffic, not having a lot of time to throw there. And Keaton Lehman putting the finishing touches in on this one. That'll be a turnover on downs, and that is going to pretty much wrap this one up. A terrific performance in all three phases tonight for the Allen East Mustangs. Yeah, and I look for, uh, as you get a good look here, Keaton Lehman, this is, this is his entire night. He's been running from these guys all night long. That doesn't feel very good, let me tell you, when you're on that end of it. Allen East right now, I would expect them to come out, take a knee here, a couple knees maybe, and... and uh, 
this game is over. I would expect you're right. As Hershberger and crew come out as Allen East will stretch their winning streak to 10 games this season. Their last loss to Elmwood, a 53-21 defeat for the uh, Division 5 Elmwood Royals. And the Royals have advanced to uh, their regional final. They've got a regional final matchup with Liberty Center coming up next Friday. And Allen East also will run their overall postseason record to 7-6. Six of those wins in the last two seasons for the Mustangs. And that is going to wrap this one up. The final seconds tick off, and they are already in the line for the handshakes. Allen East with the 37-7 win over Tri-Village. And the Mustangs move on. They will take on Marion Local. And I'll tell you what, a lot of people, particularly those two fan bases, are looking forward to that matchup next week. Yeah, no question about it. And, and a big matchup for the Northwest Conference to gain a little respect against the MAC. So I, I, I look forward to that matchup. I think it'll be a great matchup. 37 to 7 is our final. We're back to wrap this one up when we return. Welcome back. Check out highlights of tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page from tonight's game. We have a Stolly Hustle Award winner. It is Joseph Hole of Allen East. Doing a terrific job. That big kick return toward the end of the first half, that was really what I think sparked the Allen East run in the second half. Yeah, no question about it. It, it injected some juice into their game. The, it took them into halftime feeling great about their situation. The momentum was high. Their attitude was high. And, and, and I thought that really changed the game uh, for both teams going into halftime. So huge play of the game. Joe Hole, our Stolly Hustle Award winner. I want to thank Matt Comstock, Athletic Director for Bell Fountain, for hosting us tonight. And some of the Mustangs getting the uh, Snow Angels going there in the field. There are a bunch of them doing it. And there we see the region filled in. Regional final is set for next Saturday. Marion Local taking on Allen East at a location to be decided later. Could be Sydney, could be Piqua, could be right back here. Hard to say what the OHSAA and everyone else will decide, but that should be a great matchup. It's the one we've been looking toward pretty much since the beginning of the playoffs. As we go, I want to thank our wonderful crew tonight, Ben Reif, Lexi Waddle, Caitlin Henderson, and Kelsey Beimer in on getting everything done. And thank you for watching us here tonight. For Scott Nurse and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Kamler saying so long, everyone, from Bell Fountain.